Watch this video. I will be right back. No justice. No justice. No Mr. Blake, thank you for having me, sir. It's an honor. Growing up in the mountains of North Carolina, I was taught them. From as young as I can remember, I was told black people are violent. Black people are lazy. Black people are not as smart as people. I remember my dad told me that black people are too lazy to work, and so they depend on welfare to live, and they sell. Ten minutes after my dad said that to me, a man knocked on the door. I let him in. He handed my dad some money. My dad weighed out some bills and handed it to that gentleman. And then we went to the store to buy some groceries. We didn't buy groceries with the money that that man just handed my father. It was little yellow, blue, and green food coupons. So my dad is trying to teach me that black people are jealous on welfare while my dad was selling out the living room, living on welfare. You see, he would tell me, son, I work very hard. I don't make enough money to provide for you kids, so that's why I sell these. Just love you so much. And these food stamps, well, I pay my taxes, so I earn them. You see, the indoctrination begins at a very young age. We are taught without even knowing it, there are two Americas. Despite with community and community at the same rate, the black community is arrested and convicted at a rate three times higher than America. There are black Americans in prison right now serving 30 and 40 year sentences for now, while corporations are becoming multi-billion dollar businesses selling. There are two Americans. If a man broke in my house right now and I put that man in the back, albeit in my own house, I could not claim self-defense because I in the back. But a police officer Take a Blake in the back seven times and still be at work. If that's okay with you, we are on different moral platforms. We are on different ethical existences if that's okay with you. There's two Americas. The America I grew up in says if you comply, everything will be okay. Well, Franka, that's true. But black America faces a very different reality. The use of force and the threat of the use of force is actually four times higher for police initiated interactions. The America I grew up in will say, if you stop talking about it, it'll go away. <laughs> well, Franka, that's true. Because as American, I don't have to think about my race. I'm not judged by my skin color. As soon as a potential employer meets me, as soon as a loan officer meets me, as someone that's coming to appraise my home for sale, don't judge me by my skin color. American, I can completely forget about my race and even so long as nobody talks about it. So then in my world, it won't exist. Well, I've decided enough of that. I'm here to come America to task. I'm here to tell America it's time to stand the hell up beside our fellow human beings, beside our fellow citizens, and it's time for, to be part of the solution. I was raised by, I was taught how to be, so you can quit telling me that doesn't exist, you're right. I was raised in the belly of the beast. I was raised by, and now they hate me. I call that a glow up. I'm not here to speak for black America, over black America, at black America. I'm here to speak to and at America, and I'm screaming, wake the hell up. Supremacy is woven into the very fabric of this country. Supremacy bleeds from every pore of this country. In schools, we have standardized testing, but we don't have standardized resources. We don't have standardized opportunities. In hospitals, a black woman is more likely to during childbirth at a rate three times higher than that woman. In neighborhoods, power plants and dumps 
are more likely to be put up by a predominantly black neighborhood than a predominantly neighborhood. At home, 22% of black America lives in poverty, whereas only 9% lives in poverty. America loves black music, black trends, black culture, but black people at a rate 2.87 times higher than that will buy the police. All of these things will not change unless we tear down, I'm going to say that again, unless we tear down the system of supremacy that has built them into existence. We cannot fix the current system, for it is not broken. This system is working exactly as it was intended. Passing laws will not change it. You cannot legislate morality. Black America has screamed tirelessly for decades about these injustices. Warica has turned a blind eye and a deaf ear. Well, I'm here to say no more. Change is coming. Revolution is coming. It's time to open your eyes. People make up nearly 60% of the American population. And the overwhelming majority of them refuse to even admit that exists. They think that there's a conspiracy against them by the government with zero evidence. But ignore the obvious systemic oppression against black America that's well documented. Well, I've made it my life's mission to cut America to task. Mr. Blake, Miss Austin, to all the families of victims of police brutality in this country, to all of those of you who wake up every day and deal with the system of supremacy built to marginalize you, I say to you this one thing. I will stand with you. I will march with you. I will protest with you. I will fight with you. I will use my privilege and my platform to demand that America stop ignoring this humanitarian crisis happening right here in America. So America, this is your choice. Either be part of the solution or by God, you are the problem. No justice, no peace. Thank you. Now it's encouraging to see individuals challenge and unlearn harmful beliefs. The impact of teaching prejudiced beliefs to palm color children can perpetuate harmful stereotypes and contribute to systemic artism. We've seen how this has impacted everyone. Like such teachings not only affect the individuals directly involved, but also create a ripple effect, influencing broader social dynamics. Now challenging these narratives is crucial for fostering a more inclusive and equitable society. Children are highly impressionable and the racial bias they learn at a young age can shape their perspectives and interactions throughout life. When palm colored children are taught stereotypes about black individuals, it leads to ingrained biases, perpetuating discrimination, and reinforcing systemic inequalities. Now, these are the same palm colored children who grow up to be art to the cis towards their black peers, be it in schools, workspaces, and just in society. This not only affects the mental and emotional well being of those directly targeted, but also hinders the collective progress towards. A more just and unified society. Addressing these issues through education, open dialogue like these ones, and fostering empathy is essential for breaking the cycle of harmful teachings. Now, the impact of teaching prejudiced beliefs to palm color children extends beyond individual perspectives, influencing societal norms and perpetuating systemic inequalities. Children absorb information from their surroundings, including family, education, and media. When palm color children are exposed to racial stereotypes that portray black individuals as inferior. It creates a distorted worldview that leads to unconscious bias and discriminatory behavior. Now, this early exposure to biased narratives not only affects the psychological development of palm color children, but also contributes to a cycle of prejudice that adversely impacts black individuals. Stereotypes limit opportunities, create barriers to success, and fewer racial disparities in various aspects of life, such as education, employment, and healthcare. So, addressing these issues requires a comprehensive 
comprehensive approach and education plays a pivotal role in challenging stereotypes and fostering empathy by promoting diverse and inclusive curricula schools can help counteract prejudiced beliefs open and honest conversations with families and communities can also contribute to breaking down stereotypes and building bridges between racial and ethnic groups moreover media representation also plays a crucial role in shaping perceptions encouraging accurate and positive portrayals of all racial and ethnic groups can challenge stereotypes and promote a more nuanced understanding of diversity now further considerations involve understanding the long-term consequences of racial bias instilled in palm color children these biases can manifest in adulthood affecting interpersonal relationships workplace dynamics and community interactions so individuals who internalize such stereotypes intentionally or unintentionally perpetuate discriminatory practices contributing to structural artism now the economic implications are substantial as well discrimination in employment opportunities wages and career advancement based on race can result from the biased beliefs instilled during childhood this not only hampers the potential of affected individuals but also widens racial wealth gaps now efforts to address these issues should include ongoing education not only for children but also for adults cultivating an awareness of unconscious biases and promoting continuous self-reflection can also contribute to breaking the cycle of prejudiced teachings community initiatives workplace diversity programs and policy changes are essential components in creating a more inclusive society that challenges and dismantles systemic artism now while it may seem like progress has been made instances of systemic artism persist look at historical inequalities and current disparities in areas like education and criminal justice these realities emphasize the need to address and work towards dismantling systemic artism for a more equitable society it's important to listen to the experiences of marginalized communities instances of racial profiling disparities in healthcare access and housing discrimination persist numerous studies highlight these issues underscoring the ongoing reality of artism so acknowledging these challenges is a crucial step toward fostering a more inclusive and just society now when discussing artism it's crucial to recognize that parents contribute to perpetuating harmful beliefs however some may unknowingly pass on biases to their children through conversations at home conversations within families play a significant role in shaping a child's world view encouraging self reflection and open dialogue about the impact of certain beliefs can contribute to breaking the cycle and promoting a more inclusive understanding of diversity now these harmful stereotypes that these palm color kids are exposed to include perceptions that black individuals are inherently lazy we are less intelligent prone to criminal behavior or solely defined by negative cultural stereotypes now these stereotypes oversimplify and misrepresent the rich diversity within the black community these stereotypes have led to racial profiling discrimination and limited opportunities for black individuals prejudice beliefs has resulted in bias treatment in areas such as education employment and healthcare perpetuating systemic inequalities and hindering personal and professional growth palm color individuals growing up with these stereotypes have developed unconscious biases influencing their perceptions and interactions with people from the black community now this has contributed perpetuating systemic artism and maintaining social divisions now these stereotypes have created barriers to understanding and collaboration between communities prejudice beliefs has led to mistrust reinforcing social divides and hindering the collective effort needed to address broader societal issues the perpetuation of stereotypes has contributed to disparities in economic opportunities exacerbating racial wealth gaps and limiting access to resources this has not only affected individuals but also has broader implications for community well-being for both communities the psychological toll is significant black individuals have faced the burden of disproving negative stereotypes while some palm color individuals have grappled with the internal conflict of challenging these biases now palm color parents who perpetuate these harmful stereotypes contribute to a cycle of artism as they pass down biased beliefs to the next generation instead of actively working to end discriminatory attitudes this unintentional recruitment of new generations sustains and perpetuates systemic inequalities for artism to end there needs to be a collective effort in educating people educating these same parents fostering empathy and promoting open conversations that challenge ingrained biases breaking this cycle requires a commitment to dismantling prejudiced teachings and cultivating a more inclusive and equitable mindset for future generations recognizing the existence of artism understanding its impact on individuals and communities and actively working to dismantle it are essential steps toward fostering a more just and inclusive society challenging these harmful stereotypes 
stereotypes, promoting education, and encouraging open dialogue are crucial in breaking the cycle of prejudice. By fostering empathy and embracing diversity, these people can also collectively contribute to a future where everyone is treated with fairness, dignity, and equality. What do you, my viewers, have to say about this video? Share your comments in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video as I bring you another interesting video.